It's the Agribusiness Report. I'm Tony St. James. And we're on Capitol Hill this week talking ag and rural issues and nobody better to sit down and talk about those issues than with Dr. Roger Marshall from Kansas. Great to see you. Tony, great to be with you. You know, I'm a fifth generation farm kid and really my, I'm born and raised ag. I'm ag 24 seven. Most of my staff has an ag connection as well. So thanks for covering this important topic. You know, when we look back at the history of, I believe it was the first district yes, of sir. Kansas, uh, the number of members who come through the first district of Kansas and move over and, and serve well in the Senate, I can think of at least three. Yeah, you're, you're number three. Yeah, exactly. It is kind of amazing. Uh, we've all kind of born and raised the same area. Um, and whether you're first dif district congressman, you're the congressman for all of agriculture across the all state of Kansas. And, and all of us have served on that ag committee on the House side, kind of a stepping stone to the Senate. Well, it gives us an opportunity, by the way, member of the Senate Ag Committee, a former member of the House Ag Committee, right. they're teeing up a, a farm bill. Uh, it's interesting because you can get a farm bill passed on the House side, but usually a little different farm bill passed on the yeah. Senate side. What are you watching? Yeah, so, so uh, you know, a couple things, Tony. Number one is this is a five-year bill. We've got to get it right. And as much as your listeners want the certainty of a farm bill, i got to get this one right. Uh, second point on the Senate, it takes 60 votes, not 50, but 60 votes to get something done over here. So we have to start off a little bit more bipartisan versus you could get all the, the Republican votes on the House and be done with this. So there are two little different uh, bills right now. The House side to me looks like a little bit more farmer friendly, a little bit more emphasis on crop insurance and reference prices, the ARC and PLC programs. The Democrat led bill on the Senate side looks like a little bit more friendly towards the SNAP programs and conservation 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 programs with a lot of rules around it that are going to block out many of my farmers. And then things are worked out in a conference committee and you really get down to where you're you're compromising between two bills, right? Yeah, yeah, and we'll get there. I, I think the question is, are we going to get one done this year? Is it going to be during the lame duck side or would we have a better farm bill for the farmer if we waited if the Republicans controlled the Senate majority and if we had a Republican in the White House. I think that's what we're setting their weighing right now. Uh, look, we have great relationships on the Senate side with all the ag members, the Republican and Democrats, but we're pretty far apart now that we are demanding that we plus up crop insurance. I don't have to tell your listeners that our input costs are up significantly. Despite that, our commodity prices are down, but crop insurance is getting more and more expensive. That's the backbone of the, of the farm bill. Look, the, the uh, nutrition side of this, we've doubled the spending. We went from 60 to $120 billion on the SNAP programs. We're asking for just a little plus up in the crop insurance, and so far, my friends across the aisle in the Senate have not complied. So we're going we're gonna to hold fast for a while. Really, though, we've been dealing with some things where you've really had to go back and back and back to the purse, if you will, yeah. or in this instance, maybe putting it on the credit card, and I'm talking ad hoc relief. Yeah. Is it possible to, uh, to budget for ag disaster relief? Well, certainly that's been a big emphasis for us the last two years. Uh, Kansas had a huge fire, grass fire across a significant part of the land, and we're just now kind of getting things settled with that particular issue. Realizing the bigger picture beyond Kansas is there's about $21 billion of crop damage by Mother Nature last year. $21 billion. The crop insurance we've been talking about and some of the other programs probably helped cover about half of that. So we're trying to figure out, so what do you do with that other half? So we're a little upset with the way the USDA handled this last round of it, where they were paying people, the, the, uh, the folks that don't work on the farm, these absentee owners were getting more um, funding than the people that are sitting there doing the hard work that are toiling the land as well. So we're trying to go back and push USDA to be a little bit more friendly to the people doing the work. And at the end of the day, you can write bills law in and pass it out of Congress, uh, get it codified into law, but at the end of the day, the administration 
has to has to implement it. Is that correct? Yeah, so we write a, a law and maybe there's 20 or 30 rules written for each law that we write. And so we have to be tightening things up a little bit more and that's exactly what we're trying to do on this emergency plan, uh, relief funding is to tighten that up to be very more specific. Uh, the way the USDA was doing it three or four years ago worked just fine. I don't know why they changed that up and started rewarding absentee farmers, landowners more. Uh, so we'll just need to be more specific with the laws that we write. Is it the only concern you have at this point? Uh, <laughs> I, I, I know you've, you've talked about uh, some concerns with the administrations uh, on ag yeah. in the past. Look, uh, I'm just going to be really blunt. Joe Biden declared war on American energy and American agriculture the day he walked into the White House. And let me, let's be specific. Uh, let's talk about all the trade agreements that Joe Biden's got done for American agriculture. The answer is zero. And really, he's not been a friend to the farmer when it comes to enforcing uh, the USMCA trade agreement and the corn GMO, some of those types of things. So I don't think he's been a friend of enforcing the trade agreements that President Trump got done. So trade would be one issue. I don't have to tell your listeners about the overreach by the federal government when it comes to rules and regulations. I think that they've expanded waters of the U.S. They're taking herbicides and pesticides away from us. They want us to do no-till farming, but they won't let us use uh, the the uh, the plant-based uh, products that we need to keep the weeds down, right? So those would be two instances. And the third one, which is one of my favorite ones to talk about, is biofuels. Uh, we need E15 year-round, and they're squeezing a lot of my farmers out of some of these renewable tax credits by saying if you don't implement all of the conservation programs, we're not going to let you do any. And I'll be more more specific of that. Look, we've been doing no-till farming on our on our farm now since 1991, as far as I remember, 1991, um, and then practicing cover cover crops where we can where we can in Kansas. But though anyone west of where I live in Kansas, it's almost impossible to do cover crops. So what this administration is talking about doing uh, is taking away any whether it's the equip conservation programs or the renewable fuel uh, subsidies as well, the tax credits, unless you do all those things and, and simply put not every land uh, in Kansas and other states is meant to be no-tilled. Look, the farmers are the greatest, the most original conservationists ever, but they need a little bit of flexibility. So this White House has been punishing my farmers. Can't wait for November. So good to see you and I appreciate your passion and the interesting thing is I'm, I'm thinking back to the first interview we had when you were in the house same smile, same enthusiasm. <laughs> oh, I love my farmers. I, I wish my grandparents were here to be with us today to see the hard work that I'm doing. Uh, they, my dad grew up on a dairy. My grandpa on my mom's side well, had a typical Kansas wheat farm, uh, maybe 30 head of cows, and just so proud to be out there fighting for American agriculture and rural America. Thanks for what you do. Thanks, Tony. Again, Dr. Roger Marshall, honorable member of the Senate Ag Committee. We're on Capitol Hill. I'm Tony St. James. It's the Agribusiness Report.